Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and I have a fantastic card for you today. It's super easy and even if you're not into the dog stamp sets, which I'm going to tell you it's it's a little out of my normal zone of stamping. I love the layout and the idea behind this is so simple. You could certainly turn this into a lot of different things. So let me share with you this card and I have to tell you it uses one of my new absolute positive favorites which are our new watercolor pencils. We have this beautiful selection of colors to choose from and so let me bring them in and show you. I love these pencils. I've I know you've probably seen me use them a few times already. They are absolutely going to be a staple in my stamping repertoire. And so um, I think the fact that the names are on here, they you can see Old Olive. I'll even do it right side up just for you. Old Olive. Oh, let's see if we can focus on it. Or we can't. My phone is trying to focus on everything else. Oh, there, you can read it now. <laughs> can you read it now? Oh my gosh, it's like a commercial. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> These are just such amazing pencils. And I think I keep saying that, but let me tell you a little bit more of why I believe that. So first of all, we years ago, we had uh, watercolor pencils through Stampin' Up! And they were lovely, wonderful. At the time, of course, we thought they were amazing. Um, but they did not blend super well. They kind of, when you would color, um, the, the color lines would ha be hard to blend in and kind of remove. So that made it a little challenging. And um, they did not match with Stampin' Up! colors. They just picked colors that were kind of close to colors we'd use, I think, or maybe they didn't even pick the colors. Maybe they didn't have that choice. They just had colors on there. So that's kind of where that came from. These colors obviously have been carefully picked, which is wonderful. Um, we, we have a great selection of colors that, sorry, I just wanted to make sure I didn't stamp this upside down because, you know, that would just be a big fat bummer. There we go. Phew! Especially because this is a really sweet card. Look at that. I'll be, I'll be your up when you're feeling down. That's so nice. By the way, this is the stamp set I'm using. I probably could have mentioned that earlier. This is Bella and Friends. It's such a sweet stamp set. And I love how cute these little dogs are. Now my dog is a big, huge dog. She is a furball. Um, in fact, I've probably referenced her hair and shedding more than once, but this is a really sweet set, and I think a lot of it has to do with the sentiments because they're really just sweet, especially I really like this one. It's just a nice, a nice thing to say. And I mean, who would not fall in love with this? My sister has one of these kind of dogs. Um, my sister has a teddy bear, which I think is like a half Shih Tzu, half Maltese, maybe. Anyway, um, her name is Lucy with an I, and I think if if Lucy were to sign her name, she'd put a little heart over the eye. But <laughs> Lucy and Sophie, my dog, um, are kind of besties. It's really sweet because Sophie is like way, way bigger. She is a full-on golden retriever that probably weighs about 90, 80, 80, 90 pounds. Probably 80. She's been on a diet. She's doing good. Um, but oh my gosh, they're so cute when they get together. They wrestle and Sophie is so sweet because she never, like, pummels Lucy. And Lucy, like, goes into full-on attack mode. It's kind of hilarious. All right. So they actually, they recently got together over New Year's, and it was pretty funny. My sister was here visiting, and it was pretty cute. Okay. So I'm coloring in the balloon with some rich razzleberry. And then I'm going to add some melon mambo. And again, I think as soon as you feel these, you can tell these are kind of different, if you will. The colors are just so pretty and um, the, the, they're, they're smooth. I don't know. I'm having a hard time coming up with descriptive words for this, but they're really nice. Okay, now I feel like I need just a little bit more of this and maybe it's because I need to sharpen my pencil. So I don't, we used to have Stampin' Up! Uh, pencil sharpeners, which I do have one, but this one was sitting out because my daughter uses it with her art stuff. So I'm just going to grab it. 
Now, I also saw, ooh, look at that. That is a nice point. Um, <laughs> I also saw someone say that they throw away this stuff, but they keep the shavings and then they do stuff with it. Now, I am all about hoarding crafts, believe me. Trust me when I tell you I have plenty. I'm sure several of you can relate to my current situation. But I really think that keeping the shavings might just be crossing that line where the producers start calling you for their program of hoarders. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I am all for hoarding your supplies, but... Yeah, I don't know. I saw that on Facebook, I think, somewhere <laughs> recently. And I was just like, that is really taking things to the extreme. Okay, now to color this, I'm using, oops, I'm using my aqua painter, which I just dripped everywhere. I was trying to get the water flowing and I got a little aggressive. But no worries, I can just dab that right up. <laughs> so I have, this is my watercolor blanket, or not blanket, it's a burp rag from when my kids were little, but I use it to uh, wipe off colors when I'm, when I'm using my aqua painters, which is really helpful. Okay, now for this watercoloring, I'm gonna blend these colors together, and I'm doing kind of small circular motions because I don't wanna completely blend them together. I want you to see the individual colors. But I'm just kind of dabbing around and then I'm going to kind of keep going around and then I'll do some shading. And what's kind of fun about objects that are round, such as this balloon, is you can kind of go in circles, but then leave a little bit of white space in the very center. Okay, let's see if you can see that. Do you see how I did not actually, okay, focus, camera, focus. I don't know why this won't focus. Sorry. There we go. Oh, look at that. Do you see how I left that little bit of white space right there? I love it. It really gives the look of professional watercoloring like you know what you've been doing because you are an actual paid professional. I suppose one could argue that I am, but I don't feel like a true watercolor artiste. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now I want to blend these lines out just a little bit more. Again, a lot of times, this is kind of like over-embellishing your cards. You can go too far with watercoloring. So once you like it, stop. Just cut yourself off. Now, when I compare the one I'm making right now... Oh, and we're not focusing again. Sorry, guys. There we go. Um, when I compare the one I'm making right now to my sample, I can see I have kind of a little bit brighter, richer colors. So if you want to increase those colors, there's a couple things you can do. Um, and that's here again is one of the other things I love about these watercolor pencils. So I'm just going to take a scrap, which actually in this case is just a circle punch that I had. This is watercolor paper, but you can do it on like typing paper. It's fine. So you can just scribble some color onto here. And you can pick that color up and add it to your coloring. And that works wonderfully. Or you can go right to the source. You can go to your pencil. You can pick it up, the color right off the tip of your pencil. Okay, and you can add color in that way as well. Both ways work. I like this because you can just, you know, you can do it a little easier. There's, there's more space you know, surface area to cover where this is kind of a teeny little tip. Okay, now we'll change colors so you can see I clean that off. Then for my bird, um, despite my degree in biology, I am not a professional um, birdologist, or actually I know that's called an ornithologist. But I wanted to use some kind of tropical colors for what I was thinking, like a parakeet, or I believe that's what this is. I'm not sure. I should know. Um, but I just wanted to bring in some of those more tropically colors. Tropically, by the way, is an official stamping term in case you were not aware. I just, I mean, I want to keep you guys educated on these types of things. So I am using Old Olive, Pacific Point, and Bermuda Bay. Now I love these colors, but sometimes I find they don't look quite like I thought they were going to look when I color them. And Bermuda Bay is an example of that. But then when you go to uh, blend them, they look better. I'm also going to color the beak with some Daffodil Delight and the 
little thingy here in um, orange, which is pumpkin pie. Sorry, I wasn't sure which color of orange it was in the watercolor pencils. Now, I want to mention that I didn't, I kind of wanted a pink um, collar to, but I wanted the orange because I thought it would look better compositionally. Isn't that a fancy term for it looks good? So anyway, I'm going to blend and I'm going to blend the two blue shades first. And do you see how that looks better when you start blending it? I think when you lay down the color of Bermuda Bay, it's not the prettiest, but when you blend it, it's like, there it is. That's my favorite color. Oh, all is right. Okay, so I kind of went from light blue to darker blue. And then, um, oh, and I didn't do the final tail feather in Bermuda. Or, yeah, Bermuda. Because I kind of have like a theme where I do each feather in a different color. Okay. And then we're going to come back in and do the green. Now, I find this to be incredibly re relaxing, the whole process of coloring. I hope you do, too. Oh, my goodness. Um, it's just so nice. And I kind of like how my bird turned out better on this one. Let's see if we can focus again. There we go. Okay, so the coloring's so simple, right? All right, let's finish the card off because there's really not much more to it. So simple. So I have a long sheet of cardstock, Whisper White, cut the long way. This is uh, also known as the hot dog way that um, makes for the cards that open like this. And the reason why I choose my cards to open like this versus this is because um, I want their to it's it, it all comes down to tying ribbon so I want to tie a ribbon around this card at the top so that's why I cut it this way now I'm gonna put some of my designer series paper on here this is from the brights designer series paper stack and I'm lining it right up with the edge okay and then I'm gonna flip this over it looks dry I'm going to attach this. You can see I used a little scrap that has some nicks out of it, but it's okay because we're putting it on the edge and only a little bit of it is going to peek out. So I ran my strip right across there and then I will, goodness gracious, I will adhere it so that I just have like an eighth of an inch sticking out. And isn't that just a nice little peek of happy glimmer? I think there is nothing like making your card happy by adding a little glimmer paper. And the funny thing is I really do, don't like glitter, to be honest, all that much. But glimmer paper is a whole different story. It's just a bunch of awesome spark, sparkly awesomeness. Okay, then I have some, um, some Melon Mambo Thick Baker's Twine. And it's not on the roll, as you can see. And that is to an unnamed incident that we're just not ever going to talk about again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to tie a little bow on here, and then we will be all set. That's it. This card is so easy to do, and like I said, even if you don't have a dog stamp, or there is, by the way, if you're a cat person. I didn't say cat lady, by the way, just a cat person. We have a sweet little cat a little kitty set that's very similar to this but with cats so if you're if you're into that, of course, go for that one but any, any, really any stamping would work great for this layout. I love the layout. I've been doing this layout for a while. It's not like earth shattering, but so cute. Um, or anything that you need to color in. So like if you had a big flower stem here or whatever, you could totally do this card layout with that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed stamping with me. I always try to make you laugh and I always try to teach you some fabulous tips when you're watching and I love you when you join me. So please check out my blog. I've got all the details in the link in the description of this video as well as links to my online store and I would so appreciate it if you needed anything that you would purchase through me because it helps me bring more awesomeness to you every single week. Have a great day guys. Bye!